recovery and to working with her on the Armed Services Committee again soon. And I'd like to say a few words about federal judge John Roll, who lost his life on Saturday. Judge Roll was with Congresswoman Giffords the day of the shootings to Myla. press for funding. Madam Speaker, I yield 30 additional seconds. The gentleman is recognized for an additional 30 seconds. Thank you. Judge Roll was with Congresswoman Giffords the day of the shootings to press for funding to relieve overcrowding in his district. Judge Roll had been a lifetime servant of his community and his state, 63 years old. And as Justice uh, John Roberts said, Judge Roll's death is a somber reminder of the importance of the rule of law and the sacrifices of those who work to secure it. Finally, I'd like to recognize the other victims. I won't name them, and I do not know them personally, but I want to express my sympathy and condolences to their families. And I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from California. Madam Speaker, I'm, I'm pleased to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Sutherland. The gentleman from Florida is recognized for two minutes. I thank the gentleman from California. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, I rise today in support of this resolution. The thoughts and prayers of Florida's 2nd Congressional District I deliver. Our hearts are broken over the events of Saturday. We want to deliver today our, our thoughts especially to those families who lost their loved ones, the six families who are today memorializing them and planning those details. You know, I also want to make sure that, that I express my appreciation for the short time that I had a privilege of, of speaking uh, with Representative Giffords. You know, last Thursday, shortly after we were sworn in, I walked just outside the floor and she met me outside and she extended her hand to me. And she said, hello. She said, I'm Gabby Giffords. She said, you must be new. And I said, well, I am new. I'm Steve Sutherland. She goes, where are you from, Steve? And I said, Florida. She said, well, let me introduce you to some people that will help you. And she walked down the hall and out to the steps, and she introduced me to numerous, numerous floor staff. I did not have any other encounter with her except for that five-minute brief time. And on Saturday, when I learned of, of uh, the events that had occurred in Tucson, it was with horror that I got home and I turned on the television and I realized that it was that wonderful, sweet person who with kindness and gentleness introduced me to the staff. And so it is, it is with a, a burdened heart today that I want those uh, in this chamber and the people of America to know that the citizens of Florida District 2 are heartbroken as well. We are praying for each and every one affected and I want to make sure that we go from here to continue in honor of those who have given their life and those who have been affected to create a more perfect union, that we work hard to secure the blessings of liberty, for that is how we will be known by the world, not by our security, not by our policy, but by the civility, by the love we show and care for one another. That will make us a shining city on a hill, and that's what I'm committed to doing. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to yield two minutes to the distinguished gentleman from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Mr. McGovern. Gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. McGovern is recognized for two minutes. Madam Speaker, I appreciate the opportunity to speak here today. As has been said over and over, uh, Gabrielle Giffords is a smart, gifted, effective, and compassionate member of Congress. It is a privilege to be her colleague and friend. And Arizona is privileged to be represented by a person of her caliber. My wife Lisa and I pray for her recovery and our thoughts are with her, uh, her family, her friends and her community as they come together in the aftermath of this terrible act of violence. I look forward to seeing Gabby back here where she belongs on this floor advocating on behalf of her constituents. I served in, the, in this house for many years as a congressional aide and since I've been elected to Congress, I've come to appreciate even more the generous and selfless service of our staffs. So I am especially touched and grieved by the murder of Gabe Zimmerman, who served as Gabby's Director of Community Outreach. For those whose lives were lost, Christina Taylor Green, Dorothy Morris, Judge John Roll, Phyllis Schneck, and Dorwin Stoddard, who was related to one of my own staff, my sympathy, condolence, and prayers are with their families and loved ones. I believe so very strongly that we here in this House and all of us as Americans must come together and transform this tragedy into something positive and hopeful. We live in a country that is too polarized and we live in a country where a culture of violence is all too common. 
if this horrible act of violence results in all of us becoming more civil to one another and taking a more careful look at the words and imagery we use when talking to and about one another as we deal with difficult and controversial policy debates, if it results in concrete ways to begin to reverse this culture of violence, then our nation will triumph over this pain uh, and loss. Today is a time to grieve, to mourn, to express sympathy. But unfortunately, in the aftermath of this tragedy, too many of the old fights resurfaced. The left blamed the right, the right blamed the left, everybody blamed the media, op-eds were written and bills were introduced. But Madam Speaker, none of that will bring back those who are lost. None of that will put a nine-year-old girl back at the breakfast table where she belongs. Like many of my colleagues, on Monday I participated in a national moment of silence. The best thing about that moment was that for just a minute or two, the noise stopped. We paused and we reflected. And I hope that we can do more of that in the months and years ahead. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I uh, yield back my time. Gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from California. Madam Speaker, uh, it is my pleasure now to uh, yield two minutes to the gentleman who has returned from New Mexico, Mr. Pierce. The gentleman from New Mexico, Mr. Pierce, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you. Now, Speaker, it's my distinct honor to rise today and call Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords not only a colleague, but a friend. I had the pleasure of working with this fine lady from Arizona on several initiatives, beginning very early in her first term. The, the districts that we serve are very similar, southern New Mexico, southern Arizona. We share the southern border. We have issues of public land, public access, resources. So many of our perspectives uh, originate from the same sort of district. I got to know uh, Gabby on uh, just in our first month here in February. We went together to Iraq to visit soldiers. Together we would sit down and visit with young men and young women who were defending our country, who were fighting for the freedom of the Iraqis uh, there. And uh, we just grew a common bond in the service and the recognition of those who were serving in even a more difficult circumstance. We found the opportunities to work across the aisle on several issues just after we returned. And that's the, the strong memories that compel me today to stand up and say that, that I've grown to, uh, to respect and admire the efforts of this courageous young woman as she served here in Congress. As we saw the unforeseeable and tragic circumstances of this past weekend, we realize that there are circumstances that face us all. And I would recognize right now that Gabrielle Giffords decided to do her job no matter the risk. She served with courage, determination, with openness and forthrightness to her constituents that should be a model to all of us. I know that she is an inspiration for me today as she struggles to regain her health and to regain her position here as serving the American people. I've been able to support many of Gabrielle Gifford's initiatives in the past. It's my privilege today to lend my support to this resolution. I pray for a speedy recovery and for the recovery of those injured on that fateful day. I pray for the comfort of those who lost loved ones. May God bless Gabrielle Giffords. Thank you. I yield back. Gentlemen's time has expired. The gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, at this time I yield two minutes to the gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Maloney. Gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Maloney, is recognized for two minutes. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Madam Speaker, like so many of my colleagues, I knew Gabby Giffords to be a warm and caring friend, a rising star in the House with a moral compass as sure as it is true. That is why she recently spoke out against the rising tide of hate speech in our country and the lack of civility in our political process. While it may be too early to uh, come to any conclusions about the consequences of the recent tragic events, it is never too late to reflect on lessons we have learned from earlier such tragedies and take them to heart. Guns kill and those who glamorize gunplay do no service to humanity. Words matter and those who use inflammatory rhetoric to achieve cheap political gain, wound our country, and weaken the ties that bind us. Democracy triumphs. The fundamental wisdom that has dis distinguished our nation 
and letter to greatness resides in our unwavering commitment to settle our disputes with ballots, not bullets. My thoughts and prayers go out to Congresswoman Giffords. I hope for her swift and complete recovery and to her family and to all the friends and family members of the victims of that tragic event. As we approach the observance of Martin Luther King Day, let us recall the words of Robert Kennedy that were said on that tragic day so many years ago. And I quote, let us dedicate ourselves to what the Greeks wrote so many years ago, to tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world. Get well soon, Gabby. We need your leadership, your strength, your courage. You are in our thoughts. You are in our prayers. Gentleman from California. Madam Speaker, at this time I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Platts. Gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Platts, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the distinguished gentleman from California to yielding, for yielding to me. Madam Speaker, I rise in humble and solemn support for House Resolution 32. I also rise to express my heartfelt gratitude to our distinguished speaker, the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Boehner, and all members of the House leadership, Republican and Democratic alike, the thoughtful and compassionate manner in which they have united the members of this great institution in prayerful support for our beloved colleague and friend, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, and all the victims of the January 8th attack in Tucson, Arizona, is sincerely appreciated. Madam Speaker, as with all Americans, I was deeply saddened and horrified upon learning of the senseless and violent attack on Congresswoman Giffords, members of Gabby's staff, and citizens of Arizona's 8th District. This act of violence was an unthinkable attack on a dedicated public servant and her constituents. It was also an attack on one of the most important cornerstones of our form of representational democracy, the duty of elected officials to reach out to the citizens they serve. It is imperative that we not allow the tragic events of January 8th to prevent elected officials from fulfilling this duty to remain in close contact with their constituents and well-grounded in their concerns. On behalf of my wife Leslie and our family and all residents of Pennsylvania's 19th Congressional District, I offer our deepest sympathies to the families, the friends, and the co-workers of those who were taking, taken from us in this attack. Please know that you and all the victims of this terrible tragedy are and will continue to be in our thoughts and prayers. May God watch over you as he continues to watch over our grieving nation. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, at this time I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentlewoman from Wisconsin, Ms. Baldwin. Gentlewoman from Wisconsin, Ms. Baldwin, is recognized for two minutes. I thank the gentleman for, leading, uh, for yielding, and thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to express my thoughts and offer my prayers and those of my constituents for my friend and colleague, Gabby Giffords, who lies critically wounded, and for her staffer, Gabe Zimmerman, for the precious patriot, Christina Taylor Green, for Dorothy Morris, Judge John Roll, Phyllis Schneck, and Dorwin Stoddard, who lost their lives in this senseless tragedy, and to their families. Our thoughts and prayers, too, go out to the other innocent victims of this tragedy, including congressional staffers Ron Barber and Pamela Simon and their families, and our heartfelt gratitude to all those brave souls who responded valiantly and quickly preventing even more death and injury. And to the people of Arizona who love their state and our democracy, to you we express our solidarity. Gabby, as we all know, is one of the nicest, most decent, dedicated, concerned, and compassionate representatives in this body. The fact that she and her staff were gunned down while doing their jobs doing exactly what is required in a democracy makes this tragedy even more unfathomable. And so I'm concerned about the impact of this tragedy on our democracy. 
We cannot have a well-functioning democracy without ample interaction and discourse between members of the public and their elected officials. Directly or indirectly, this tra tragedy invites us to examine the way we conduct business on all levels. There is no question that political discourse has become toxic at times. And I hope that out of this tragedy comes a renewed commitment to civility. I applaud Speaker Boehner and Leader Pelosi for setting the right tone. We have a moment now to look prospectively at how we debate issues of great import. I additional 30 seconds to the gentlewoman. General I thank the gentleman. I hope we seize this moment to come together as a Congress and ask how can we bring renewed civility to consequential debate and create a new environment in which people can differ without demonizing others. People reach different conclusions about important topics of our time. But each of us, like Gabby, seeks office because we want to make life better for the people we represent. We want a better America. Gabby, keep fighting the good fight. We need you, and America needs you. I yield back. The gentlewoman yields back. The gentleman from California. <laughs> Madam Speaker, at this time I um, I am pleased to yield two minutes to the gentlelady from Tennessee, Ms. Blackburn. The gentlewoman from Tennessee, Ms. Blackburn, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, like our colleagues, am rising in sorrow today to address the events that occurred in Arizona this past weekend. Our thoughts and prayers are with all of those victims, with their families, and with our colleague, Gabby Giffords. She was doing what we all do, hearing the concerns of her constituents, and I think we all know and recognize that we in this chamber are more visible and more accountable than ever before. On Saturday, a madman, a monster, attempted to assassinate our beloved colleague. She was shot in the line of duty, the duty of listening to, so that she could more effectively represent those constituents. It was a duty that she and many of us do love and do treasure that interaction with our constituents. Today, more so than ever, as members of Congress are called to that duty, we realize that it, it goes with us wherever we go. Every trip to the grocery store, to church, to a soccer game can turn into a town hall meeting. That accessibility to those who count on us to make the right decisions is something that we cannot give up. Even though this past weekend's events have devastated us, we must not compound the tragedy by being deterred from those duties. The shooting occurred on Saturday, and on Sunday, I kept a previously scheduled district appointment at Fort Campbell. That Army post is home to the 101st Airborne when they are not deployed, as they currently are in Afghanistan. These public servants know what the senseless loss of an honored friend, colleague, even a hero feels like. They also know better than anyone else that service is often most valuable when it is performed in the face of fear, uncertainty, or hostility. So many of my constituents have asked, what will this mean for how we as members carry out our jobs? And I think we'll all be more careful we will, when we undertake our duties. We know we are not responsible not only for our own safety, we're responsible for the safety of our staff, our constituents who bring issues to us. And in this, I hope our service does credit to the men and women in uniform. California. Grant the gentlelady an additional 30 seconds. Gentlewoman is uh, recognized for an additional 30 seconds. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I hope our service does credit to the men and women in uniform who have served us so very well. God bless Gabby Giffords, bless our staff, her constituents, the other innocent victims, bless this house and our great nation. I yield back. Gentlewoman yields back. Gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, at this time I yield two minutes to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Doggett. Gentleman from Texas, Mr. Doggett, recognized for two minutes. Our energetic and talented colleague, Gabby Giffords, was doing what she does so well, the core responsibility of every member listening to her constituents in an open public forum. Young and old, Americans of all political philosophies, 
gathering to meet with her. This is the very type of neighborhood office hours that so many of us hold. Uh, I've held uh, many of them throughout Central Texas. And this is the very type of accessibility and openness that is fundamental to our democracy and critical to a society that recognizes that change is achieved through ballads, not bullets. Less than a year ago, another disturbed individual expressed his anger by crashing his airplane into a building in Austin, Texas that housed IRS employees, causing great death and destruction. Incredibly, a Facebook page was erected quickly in his honor. What I said then, I would reemphasize today. We must, turn down the viol the, we must turn down the volume on hate to discourage more such horrors. Debate, vigorous debate, is at the very heart of our democracy. Sometimes it is heated and strongly worded. Such strong discourse helps us to set America's course. But violence is not discourse. It debases our democracy. Violence can kill a human being, but it cannot kill the truth. In a free and open market of ideas, truth will ultimately prevail. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., whose life and work we celebrate this very month, I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. That is why right, temporarily defeated, is stronger than evil triumphant. We pray for those lost and the many who still suffer from this great tragedy. Time has expired. The gentleman from California. Well, Madam Speaker, I yield uh, two minutes to the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Fitzpatrick. The gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Mr. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to humbly add my voice to the remarks made so eloquently by my colleagues. I had the honor of personally meeting Representative Giffords for the first time just last week here in the chamber. And although my service in the House has thus far only over overlapped ever so briefly with hers, Gabby's attitude of service and spirit of commitment to those that she represents was immediately apparent. Representative Giffords was practicing one of the most basic and important duties that a member of Congress will have, making herself available to constituents when a gunman viciously and inexplic inexplicably attacked her and 19 others. It is difficult to find explanation for such a tragic event, and while an explanation will always elude us, we can find comfort in the prayer of a friend and constituent from my home district in Pennsylvania Rabbi Ira Budow. Just this past Monday evening before a town hall meeting in Bucks County, Rabbi Budow prayed. He said, I pray that the disaster in Arizona serves as a wake-up call for our country and results in a more caring and loving atmosphere for us all. At the end of the day, we are all Americans in rise and fall together. Proud to support the resolution. I yield back. And yields back the gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, at this time I'm happy to yield two minutes to the distinguished gentlewoman from Hawaii, Ms. Hirono. Gentlewoman from Hawaii, Ms. Hirono is recognized for two minutes. Madam Speaker, I rise to join my colleagues today in support of this resolution and associate myself with the eloquent and heartfelt expressions of condolences and comfort from my colleagues from both sides of the aisle. And to hear the wonderful stories about Gabby told on this floor help capture the warmth and humanity that is Gabby Giffords. The shock, horror, and tears that followed the unfolding of the terrible news from Arizona, who can, it, it's like just yesterday. Here was Gabby out on the first day after we finished votes to meet with her constituents at a Congress on your corner, an event that many of us do in our own districts. She was joined by her dedicated staff and a large number of constituents who wanted to talk with her, including a third grader so excited to meet with her congressperson who had just been elected to an office in her elementary school. 
I send my condolences on behalf of all of the people of Hawaii to the families of those who lost loved ones in this senseless act of violence. And I'm going to say their names again because they must not be forgotten. John Roll, 63, Chief Judge for the U.S. District of Arizona. Gabriel Matthew Zimmerman, 30, Representative Giffords, Director of Community Outreach. Christina Taylor Green, nine years old, beautiful, bright girl who should have had a chance for a full life. Dorothy Morris, 76, whose husband was critically injured trying to protect her during the shootings. Phyllis Schneck, 79, mother of three, grandmother of seven. Doran Stoddard, 76, who shielded his wife, Mavi, who was also wounded. Our prayers are with those who are struggling to recover from their injuries, including our dear friend and my classmate, Gabby, Gabby's husband, Mark Kelly, and all of the fam family members of the victims. We are all one family, as we say in Hawaii and Ohana, united in our collective grief and prayers. I was listening to NPR this morning and learned that the evening before this terrible tragedy, uh -huh. Iowa. I would May yield I have an additional 30, 30 seconds. seconds. The gentleman is recognized for an additional 30 seconds. I thank the gentleman. The day before this terrible tragedy, Gabby had reached out to a friend of hers, Kentucky Secretary of State Trey Grayson, a Republican, to talk to him about ways that we both, we all, could tone down the political rhetoric and partisanship. And at this point, we don't know what drove the gunman to commit this horrible act of violence, but regardless of whether his actions have a causal connection with the increasingly negative tone of our political discourse, I think this tragedy should give us all pause to reflect. Just as we have all come together today to honor the victims of this tragedy, I believe we can honor Gabby by going forward with a heightened commitment to respect each other, listen to each other's points of views, and come up with policies that will strengthen our nation. We must go forward together. Mahalo nui loa. Gentlewoman's time has expired. The gentleman from California. Uh, Madam Speaker, at this time, it's my privilege to yield two minutes to the gentlelady from New York, Dr. Hayworth. Gentlewoman from New York, Dr. Hayworth is recognized for two minutes. Madam Speaker, I rise to honor the victims of Saturday's senseless and atrocious attack. Congresswoman Giffords and her staff are constantly in the thoughts and prayers of her colleagues in the House. And as a mother, I am most profoundly saddened by the loss of the youngest victim, Christina Taylor Green. Christina was only nine years old. She belonged to history at the beginning of her life, and she belongs to history at the end of her life. She was born on September 11, 2001, and Christina was acutely aware of the impact that day had on our nation, but she always found the positive and hopeful in that dreadful event. She would often tell people she was born on a holiday, and she said it was a holiday because it gave hope to say that, and people came together on that day. She wore red, white, and blue, and she was vocal about her patriotism and her pride to be an American. And in addition to being extremely patriotic, Christina was an inquisitive and mature young lady who had recently taken an interest in the most fundamental of American rights, civic engagement. She had just been elected to her own student government, and she was attending Saturday's event to meet her congresswoman and learn more about government. As we grieve for her loss, it is important to pay tribute to the model young citizen Christina was and for us to honor her memory. As adults, we can all learn from Christina's positive outlook on life, love of country, and participation in government. Even during these very dark and painful times, we should take solace in knowing that with children like Christina growing up in our society, our nation has a bright future. Thank you. And with that, I yield back. Madam Gentlewoman Speaker. yields back. A gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, at this time, I'm um, delighted to yield two minutes to the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Capps. Gentlewoman from California, Ms. Capps, is recognized for two minutes. I thank my colleague from Iowa.
Madam Speaker, I rise to express my strong support for HRES 32, a resolution to honor Gabrielle Giffords as she recovers from her injuries, to pay tribute to those who lost their lives, and to thank those who helped the injured and prevented further loss of life. This is a devastating and emotional week for all of us here in Congress, for our staff, and for America as the whole. The senseless and atrocious act of violence in Tucson has infringed upon our sense of safety and decency. It has also left us grieving for a colleague, for her staff, for the six Americans who lost their lives last Saturday, as recited by my colleague from Hawaii just now. Representative Giffords, Gabby, to so many of us, is truly a treasured member of this body. She's a gifted legislator, frequently leading her colleagues on issues like solar energy, space endeavors, veterans' health care, and comprehensive immigration reform. But Gabby is also known around Capitol Hill as a smart, a generous and unfailingly dedicated public servant and friend. She's the one who would be helping to plan a baby shower for one of her colleagues, to reach across the aisle to lend a supportive hand to a colleague in need of advice or laugh, to take time to offer a hand to a staffer after a long day at work. I also think of Gabby as a unique and all too rare representative in this Congress. She prefers considerate and detailed debate over harsh and angry rhetoric. She chooses her words thoughtfully and has spoken out against violent language and the consequences such careless acts create. So I would argue that if we really want to pay tribute to Gabby here today, may her service not be an exception to the rule. We in this chamber have the opportunity to live every day by the words we are speaking today. Madam Speaker, the sorrow and grief of Saturday's tragedy will echo for many years to come as we pray and take stock of this tragedy I am also concerned by the ease with which a clearly troubled young man could obtain a firearm. And I believe that this incident also illuminates a serious gap in our mental health system, one where far too many ill people slip through the cracks. The price for these failings is all too often paid, as in this case, by friends and neighbors. We owe it to the victims of this horrific tragedy to improve our mental health system. Could I ask for an additional 30 seconds, please? Madam Speaker, at this time I'd yield 30 seconds additional to the recognized. Thank you. We owe it to the victims of this horrific tragedy to improve our mental health system and in addition to address gun violence. We can do better. Let us resolve to do so. Like everyone here and countless at home, I am praying for Gabby Swift recovery, for her constituents who lost their lives, and for our country. Let us adopt this resolution today in honor of our beloved friend Gabby and the victims of this senseless tragedy. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentlewoman yields back. Gentleman from California. Uh, Madam Speaker, at this time, I uh, do not believe I have any other speakers. Uh, I would intend to close on this, so I will reserve my time. So the gentleman from California time. reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, at this time, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from California, Mr. Sherman. The gentleman from California, Mr. Sherman, is recognized for two minutes. We come together today as a nation to mourn those who died in Arizona and to pray for the full recovery of those still lying in hospital beds in Tucson. Gabby Giffords has captured the love and admiration of this entire country as America has come to know her through news reports, just as we have come to know her over the last four years as the most delightful and engaging member of this House and as a woman who brought intelligence and determination to the service of this country. The last time I had a chance to spend time with the Gabby was just six days ago. We were here on the House floor. As it happens, we sat next to each other as we waited our turn to be assigned a portion of the Constitution to be read. We had a chance to listen to each passage to speak briefly about some of the salient provisions. And as they got down the line to, our, uh, to, to where we were sitting, it became apparent that Gabby would be called upon to read the First Amendment to the Constitution and that I would be called upon to read the considerably less august Third Amendment. For just a uh, selfish instance, I wondered why luck couldn't have been just a little different 
if we had been sitting just one seat over, then I could have stood here and talked about freedom of religion and freedom of speech. But Providence had determined otherwise, had determined that Gabby Giffords should stand on this floor and have the honor of reading the First Amendment, amendment that is best known for its earlier clauses, but which ends with the words that enshrine the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. The day after she read those words at this podium, she flew home to Arizona so she could stand in front of a Safeway, intending to meet people peaceably assembled and to listen to them petition for a redress of their grievances. I ask the gentleman for another 30 seconds. I would yield an additional 30 seconds. Gentlemen, Madam Speaker. recognize for an additional 30 seconds. I was relieved yesterday when doctors said that they were confident that the assassin had not taken Gabby's life. And I am confident that that assassin did not take from our people the right to peaceably assemble and to tell their elected representatives their ideas and, yes, their grievances. And I look forward to two years from now and two years after that and two years after that to sitting here on this floor with Gabby and waiting until she is called upon to read the First Amendment. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from California. Contrary to my previous statement, I, I do have another speaker. And at this time, I would like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Tennessee, Dr. Rowe. A gentleman from Tennessee, Dr. Rose, recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in support of this resolution, and I join my colleagues in denouncing the horrific attack that occurred against one of our own this past weekend and took the lives of six innocent people, including a staff member, Gabe Zimmerman, and a beautiful, beautiful nine-year-old child. We continue to pray for Congresswoman Giffords and all those who were injured and the families of the deceased. As members of Congress, we have two responsibilities after such an attack. First, we must vow that we will never let the work of a madman stop us from doing our work on behalf of the American people. And secondly, we will make it clear to all that while we have disagreements, we are all still Americans and we respect each other. Words matter. And when we show Americans that we can disagree substantively and respectfully, we bring our entire country closer together and show the world why America is the greatest force for good. And as a song that uh, Sarah McLaughlin sings, Angels, we place them in the arms of angels, and may God bless this family and these people who endured this horrific event. And I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Moran. The gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Moran, is recognized for two minutes. I thank the very distinguished gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, Gabby Giffords is a wonderful human being and a treasured colleague and friend. But this resolution, as important and appropriate as it is, stops short of any collective commitment to prevent this type of tragedy from happening again. It happened because of a combustible mix of one, a highly charged anti-government political environment, two, easy access to weapons whose only purpose is to kill large numbers of other th human beings, and three, mental illness. Not too long ago, another mentally ill person used the same kind of weapon to kill 32 innocent people on the Virginia Tech campus. In response, we passed legislation eventually that enabled states to provide the names of people that they judged were too mentally imbalanced to be buying guns and provide those names to the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. We authorized $250 million to enable them to do that. But since then, we have appropriated each year less than 10% of that amount. And as a result of the 2.6 million people that the states know should be disqualified from buying firearms, Less than 20 percent are actually on that list and so disqualified. In fact, less than 4 percent of Arizonans who the state knows should be disqualified from purchasing firearms are actually on that list 
and unable to purchase those firearms. So perhaps we could consider following up on this resolution with some concrete steps to prevent this from happening again. I know it's important to protect one's individual freedoms, but a little nine-year-old girl should also have the freedom to, to, to visit with her congresswoman, secure in the knowledge that her Congress has the courage to take reasonable steps to protect her and our country from such senseless violence. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Gentleman's time has expired. Gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes at this time to the gentleman from Connecticut, Mr. Courtney. The gentleman from Connecticut, Mr. Courtney, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the horror of Saturday's bloodshed in Arizona, the senseless loss of life, and the cowardly attack on Gabby Giffords has raised for many Americans the question of whether we as a nation have lost our way. Many wonder if an act so benign as Gabby's effort to listen to her neighbors in the 8th Congressional District of Arizona can be the target of such violence, whether there is hope and a future for our democracy. One voice from our recent past suggests that there still is hope for that fragile ideal. On April 4, 1968, Senator Robert Kennedy spoke in Indianapolis, Indiana, shortly after the slaying of Martin Luther King, at a time when political violence racked our nation. This is what he said. We have to make an effort in the United States. We have to make an effort to understand, to get beyond these difficult times. He then said, my favorite poet was Aeschylus, and he once wrote, even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our own despair, against our will, comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. He concluded that what we need in the United States is not division, what we need is not hatred, what we need is not violence and lawlessness. It is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. Gabby Gifford's work at that Tucson shopping mall on January 8th and all those present and all those victimized by a coward's bullets were affirming Senator Kennedy's vision that peaceful dialogue and understanding is the true calling of the American people, not division and violence. As one who entered Congress with Gabby with the class of 2006, a tight-knit group that has met every Wednesday over the last four years. It has been an honor to watch her on the Armed Services Committee advocating for the Air Force and for military families. Even during the lame duck session, she was a leader in enacting the GI Bill patch, which will make sure that Guard and Reservists will not be left out from the GI Bill's educational benefits. She is an extraordinary person who this country needs if we are going to overcome the many challenges that we face today. Mr. Speaker, I strongly support passage of this resolution, Madam Speaker, which is an affirmation that we will not surrender our way of life to the forces of lawlessness and hate. On behalf of the people of Eastern Connecticut, I want to express our awe and reverence to the examples of human courage and excellence which Gabby Giffords and the other victims in Tucson displayed to the world last Saturday. I yield back. Gentlemen's time has expired. Gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, I'm proud to yield two minutes to the gentlewoman from the District of Columbia, Ms. Holmes Norton. Gentlewoman from the District of Columbia, Ms. Holmes Norton, is recognized for two minutes. I thank, I, I thank the gentleman for yielding. <clears throat> A gunman has underestimated the will and undaunted bravery of Gabby Giffords. Tra tragically, we have lost Gabe Zimmerman, her director of community outreach, her constituents, Judge John Rawl, Christina Taylor Green, Phyllis Schneck, Doris Stoddard, and Dorothy Morris, all of whom were engaged in the very civic activities we most encourage, along with 13 others who were injured, along with Congresswoman Giffords. Together, these, amendment, these Americans have brought this house together as never before for a much needed time of reflection. I'm heartbroken for all, I'm heartbroken for all who were in the line of fire and for their families. I focus now on Gabby because I cannot get her out of my consciousness. I'm trying to understand her prescient fearlessness in the days before the attempt on her life for what has happened to, civility, to civil discourse in our country, rather than for her own safety. Can Gabby's selflessness 
and her concerns for our country give us the fortitude to follow her examples in, in assuming that it is not the safety of members that is at risk. Do we dare to follow Gabby in her search for ways to be at once resolute and respectful? Remarkable courage and, and determination have made Gabrielle Gifford the living manifestation of what members of this institution and the citizens of our great country want to be. May Gabby Gifford's words prove as contagious as her courage. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlewoman's time has expired. The gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to yield two minutes to the distinguished gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Cummings. Gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Cummings, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, gentlemen, for, leave, for yielding. Madam Speaker, like every speaker today, I rise with a very heavy heart. Our friend Gabrielle Giffords lies in a hospital bed fighting desperately for her life. At the same time, dozens are in mourning for those <clears throat> killed in senseless slaughter, including Judge John Rowe and our own Gabe Zimmerman, Congresswoman Giffords, Director of Public Outreach. We join them in a grieving process that is painful beyond words. To those families, particularly that of Gabe's, who reached out in Gabby's voice each and every day, we weep for your loss and know of the constant ache left in your hearts by the sudden loss of those you love. And we are blessed to join you in the celebration of their lives. And as we mourn those who were lost, we triumph with equal emotion in miracles. By the mercy of God and the swift hands of our medical heroes, Gabriel Giffords and many of those wounded by this madman have been saved. When I heard of this tragedy, I immediately asked a question that each of us here must have wondered dozens of times. How can anyone hate or seek to harm this wonderful public servant, this beautiful person who has never spoken a cross word nor showed a downcast expression throughout her time in this great house? Though these answers are painfully slow in coming, I pray her return to the warm embrace of her family will be swift. More selfishly, because she is my friend and because I see in her the pure heart of a servant, I pray she will return to this chamber as soon as possible to continue her work for the people of Arizona whom she so treasures. Gabby knows at the core that she is an ordinary lady called to an extraordinary mission. Gabby, you are a champion among champions, a friend among friends, and a fighter among fighters for the common good. We all are pulling for you. Get well soon. We can't wait to have you back. With that, I yield back. Gentleman's time has expired. Gentleman from Iowa. Madam Speaker, uh, at this time I yield myself as much time as I am about to consume. Gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, this body is numb. We forget that we are a family, a dysfunctional family at times, but we are a family and we all get to know each other. We all have a common passion for the values of this country that brought us here in the first place. And that is a remarkable story that we've heard unfolding about our good friend Gabby Giffords since this horrible tragedy first took place. All of us in this body share a unique sense of responsibility for what happened to our dear friend, her courageous staff, and the incredible people who showed up to participate in democracy at that Safeway in Tucson on Saturday. And I know that a lot of us had this shared experience of horror on Saturday as we watched these horrible images appear in front of our eyes. I want to take time briefly to talk about my good friend Gabby, and it's ironic that on this day when our president is in Tucson honoring the memory of those who lost their lives and those struggling to put their lives back together, that my connection with Gabby and President Obama go back to the exact same day. It was September 29th of 2006 and Gabby and I were both candidates for Congress. We met an event and there were things about her that leaped off 
the page immediately. It was her passion for why she was running. It was her fearlessness. And it was that smile that you've heard people talking about that could light up a room. And we got talking about each other and what we had in common, and I learned that her brother, Alex Giffords, had been a place kicker at Iowa State University, where I graduated from college and where I was an unknown walk-on under Earl Bruce. And we talked about that. And I have in my office this little print of Beardshear Hall at Iowa State University that my friend Gabby gave to me that she got from her brother Alex because she knew this was important to me. And this little picture is an emblem of what an amazing human being Gabby Giffords is because she was always thinking more of her friends more than she was of herself. I got on a red eye after first meeting Gabby Giffords and flew back to my district and met an unknown senator from Illinois who had just gotten elected named Barack Obama for the very first time. That's what's great about this country is these random meetings that we have with amazing people from all over the country who we meet on the House floor, many of whom came in in the, one of the largest classes in recent memory. You heard them come to the floor today and talk about someone they barely knew or may have met briefly or didn't know at all. Because that's what binds us together is the spirit, the history of this chamber and what it has meant as the people's house. And that is why it is incumbent on all of us to take away as a lesson from this tragedy a renewed sense of respect for each other and for the common purpose that brought us all here together in the first place. I talked about how we are a family. Every Thanksgiving, our family has a tradition of watching a movie called Home for the Holidays about a very dysfunctional family and the, the star of that movie is Holly Hunter. And in one of the closing moments of this movie, which like all good movies makes you laugh, makes you cry, and makes you think, Holly Hunter's father is down in a basement watching old home movies and he's talking to her about one moment in his life that took five seconds and made all the difference in the world in his relationship with his daughter. And he said, you were fearless. Huh? Fearless. That is my friend Gabby Giffords. She is fearless in what makes this job worth having. And that is why we have a responsibility to her and all the people who lost their lives and who showed up at that town hall meeting because they care about this country to make a difference going forward in how we talk to each other and how we care about each other. As we look forward to next Monday, we should remember what Martin Luther King Jr. taught us, that the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. We have a collective duty, all of us, to make sure that we bend that arc sooner and quicker so that the American people realize that we are all in this together and that this is the people's house for a reason. I want to thank my Republican colleagues for their extreme sensitivity and their devotion to this important resolution. And with that, I want to thank my colleague from California for helping us put this resolution together today, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of this time. The gentleman from California. Uh, Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, I rise uh, in enthusiastic support of HRS 32. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, I'm privileged and humbled to be able to uh, close out this debate. I am not, as some who have come to the floor, a close personal friend of Gabby Giffords, but I, as uh, have others, have uh, been under her spell here. I've had the chance to talk with her on several occasions in an informal setting. And I might mention that on each of those occasions, she reminded me that she used to be a Republican. I don't know if that was her way of thinking that uh, maybe we could have a rapport. You didn't really need that with her because of her openness and her smile. But it uh, was interesting, 
and she always did it with a smile, and she always did it with a, an invitation to engage with her that is uh, the mark of her. Uh, we pray, all of us together, that she and those others grievously wounded will have a speedy and full recovery. We pray for those who have lost their lives. We pray for this institution, that we will take the correct lessons out of this tragedy. And when I use the word tragedy, it is a tragedy on the side of those who were attacked in the institution that was attacked. It is, however, the product of a criminal act, and we should understand that. Madam Speaker, it is um, always it is always uh, within our power to either take the proper lessons from a particular incident or to discard them, to um, think deeply about them or s think of them superficially. I believe that the fact that we have dedicated this entire day to trying to find the right lessons out of that and to give proper respect to those who suffered in this tragedy is evidence of the fact that we, were, we will attempt to take the proper lessons out of this. One is, of course, that this is the people's house. If you read the Constitution, Article I, it is clear that the House of Representatives is meant to be the closest to the people of any of the federal, in, federal institutions. We all, in a real sense, no matter where we come from, are institutionalists in that we love this institution. We fought in many ways to get here, but we honor one another by showing respect to one another, and we honor our constituents as well. Speaker Boehner has said, an attack on one is attack on all. That is true. Perhaps several hundred years ago, the writer, the poet, John Donne, said it best. He said, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a cloud be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore, Never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. All time for debate has expired. Pursuant to the order of the House of today, the previous question is ordered on the resolution on the preamble and on the preamble. The question is on adoption of the resolution. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The resolution is agreed to, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The gentleman from California. Go to Senate Concurrent Resolution uh, 1. I move that the House do now adjourn. The gentleman will suspend. Uh, pending that, the chair will announce one appointment. Without objection, pursuant to Clause 11 of Rule 10, Clause 11 of Rule 1, and the order of the House of January 5, 2011, and notwithstanding the requirement of Clause 11A1C of Rule 10, the Chair announces the Speaker's appointment of the following members of the House to the Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Mr. Thornberry of Texas, Mrs. Myrick of North Carolina, Mr. Miller of Florida, Mr. Conaway of Texas, Mr. King of New York, Mr. Lobiondo of New Jersey, Mr. Nunez of California, Mr. Westmoreland of Georgia, Mrs. Bachman of Minnesota, Mr. Rooney of Florida, Mr. Heck of Nevada. The question is on the motion to adjourn. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. Pursuant to, Senate, pursuant to Senate Concurrent Resolution 1, the House stands adjourned until 2 p.m. on January 18, 2011. And pursuant to House Resolution 32, the House stands adjourned out of respect for the victims of the tax in Tucson, Arizona. The U.S. House today focusing on one issue.